If over 50 million tires were dumped in one location over a period of 20 years, the area would be contaminated. This is the result you may expect. The pyramids of Giza in Egypt, which are considered to be one of mankind's greatest achievements, can also be seen from space. The tire graveyard in Kuwait can also be viewed from space. You must understand that there is more than one layer of tires on the surface at this point. These are really large mounds. In fact, enormous pits that resembled craters were excavated so that the tires could be thrown into them. And just like that, the dumping ground in Sulibia became the largest tire graveyard in the world, which is something of a major event, especially for the country of Kuwait. If you aren't familiar with this small nation in the Middle East, you might be astonished to learn that the Kuwaiti dinar is the unit of currency with the highest value in the entire world. Kuwait is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, according to its GDP per person. This is a result of both their oil-based economy and their peculiar demographics. There are around 4.5 million people living in Kuwait. However, only 33% of them are citizens of Kuwait. This means that 3 million people are not citizens of the country, yet they nonetheless work and live there. They would love to become citizens, but in order to do so, not only do they have to have lived there for a total of 20 years, but they also have to have been born Muslim or converted to Islam, and they have to have been practicing Islam for at least five years. It wasn't a good look for such a wealthy nation to be home to the largest tire graveyard in the world, especially when one considers that their neighbor, Qatar, was selected to host the World Cup in 2022. As a result, the government at long last took action and things eventually came to a head. However, the cause is not what you believe it to be. At this tire graveyard, there were a total of three big fires between 2012 and 2020. The high temperatures in the air across the country were the cause of these fires. During these incidents, a significant quantity of hazardous substances was discharged into the atmosphere. The fact that the tire graveyard was situated directly adjacent to the residential district of Aljara was not helpful to the locals, who were becoming increasingly frustrated by the recurrent fires that were taking place. In order to have a better grasp on the scope of this issue, let's take a look at what that massive fire appeared to be like from above. That's just a teeny tiny sliver of the tire cemetery over there. The problem is that large-scale fires using tires are not unusual. Five young people in Canada started a fire in February of 1919 in a landfill that contained 14 million tires. The fire occurred in Hargersville, which is located in the province of Ontario. The fire continued to burn for 17 consecutive days despite the best efforts of the firemen, and it ultimately forced 4,000 individuals to leave their homes. Therefore, as a result of many fires, the government of Kuwait has finally stated that a number of facilities are going to be created in order to reposition the tires and recycle them. They appear to have fulfilled their promise, which I have to say is quite impressive. When the satellite photographs were compared, it was clear that by September 2021, all of the tires had been relocated from their initial site to a number of other recycling facilities. But I'm curious to know what exactly they did with those 50 million tires. Rubber, which provides traction, carbon black, which provides durability, and metal wires, which provide structure, make up a tire. Tires are heated to a temperature of 840 degrees Fahrenheit by the use of a thermochemical process known as pyrolysis. The component of rubber is converted into a gas, which is subsequently cooled and then offered for sale as a liquid form of biofuel. After the temperature in the chamber has been brought down, the carbon black char will be removed, placed in huge bags and stored. After what seemed like an eternity, the container was opened and what was discovered inside was a gigantic spool of metal wires.
Before being extracted, using a miniature crane and transported for recycling, these wires are given a light misting of water in an effort to delay deterioration as much as possible. If you've ever been responsible for cleaning, what's with the clogged sink in the shower? You would have fished something out of the drain, wouldn't you? You are familiar with the topic I'm discussing. The similarities are unsettling. Recycling tires can also be done in a number of other ways. One of these activities is shredding. After that, the rubber scraps are compressed and transformed into products such as rubber tiles, which are used in the building industry. It is believed that one billion tires that have reached the end of their useful lives are produced each year, and there are currently four billion tires stored in landfields and stockpiles across the globe. It would be possible for us to have such lovely flowers blanket the entire planet. Hold on, they are not flowers, are they? The vehicles in question are bicycles, and the riders do not intend to leave them here for the day. In China, there is a cemetery for bicycles like this one. The middle of the 21st century saw a rise in popularity of bike sharing in China, which culminated in the establishment of the first large-scale bike sharing program in Beijing in 2014. The concept of bike sharing swiftly expanded to other cities around the country, leading to fierce competition among businesses such as Ofo, Mobik, and Blue Gogo for a part of the market. And what this meant was a rapid and widespread expansion of many different companies that provide bike-sharing services into numerous cities. At its height, there were 70 bike-sharing firms operating in China. By 2017, China had become the largest bike-sharing market in the world, with an estimated 16 million shared bikes on the streets. In the United States, the number of bike-sharing companies has ranged from 10 to more than 100. However, it was not long before it became clear that the increase had considerably and quickly outrun the demand in the present moment. Many municipalities were unable to cope with the influx of shared bicycles on their streets because they lacked the legislation and infrastructure necessary to do so. For instance, in 2017, the number of bicycles that the city of Beijing could safely accommodate was limited to a maximum of 1.2 million. However, companies that rent out bicycles had already dispersed 2.3 million bicycles across Beijing, which is about double the city's maximum capacity. Due to the enormous surplus of bikes, it was inevitable that a great number of them would be parked in places in the city that were not suited for doing so. As a direct result of that, Large heaps of impounded, abandoned, and damaged bicycles have become a common sight in many of the nation's largest cities. Quickly, staff from the city's maintenance department and employees from larger bike-sharing firms began collecting the bicycles and removing them from public view. The years that followed saw a fast consolidation of the bike-sharing industry in China, with many smaller companies going out of business and the larger competitors either combining or abandoning the market. As of March 2nd, 2018, 34 out of the total of 70 bike-sharing companies had shut their doors due to financial difficulties. The bicycles were not being accepted for return. Because of this, thousands of bicycles ended up haphazardly piled on top of one another in mounds. Each of China's bicycle disposal facilities has anywhere from 50,000 to 200,000 bicycles in storage at any given time. Even if the market has leveled off and is no longer expanding at the breakneck pace, it was in 2017. Bike sharing is still a popular mode of transportation in many Chinese cities today. Thank you for watching this video.